before I move on into Bible history and into the history of the church, because both of them kind of run in tandem with each other, I, I can't really explain one without explaining the other for uh, some of my brand new Christian friends. And that, that's what all this is, is for back here behind me. It's, it's really for my brand new friends, my brand new Christian friends who are just trying to wrap their head around the whole concept of Christianity. And I can, I can really understand where they're coming from um, because there are so many different churches you can attend. There's so many different beliefs that you can have. There's so many different versions of the Bible. Somebody stepping into this, it's like walking into a fan blade. It's, it's like, which one do you choose? Where, where do you go? And it shouldn't be that difficult. And people have just made it way, 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 way too difficult. So what I hope to do in these next few videos, as long as you see this board behind me, um, I want to look at each one of the symbols behind me. And I want to discuss the importance of each symbol. I want to um, give you some analogies of the importance of each particular symbol and how it may relate to doing something else. This, this at least is in my opinion, okay? This is in my opinion of the importance of the symbols. Um, and the only purpose here is to help clarify your perception of Christianity. This is by no means set in stone. Um, as you mature in Christ and you mature in your knowledge, you may come up with a completely different set of standards, a completely different set of symbols. Um, what is very important to you may not be important to me. What's important to me may not be very important to you. But this is simply to help you wrap your head around Christianity and the importance of entering Christianity in the right frame of mind and with the right perspective. I'm going to start on the, uh, on the top row with some very strong symbols of Christianity that I have had through my tenure uh, with being a Christian. And the first symbol here behind me is this relationship, this, this hugging of uh, Jesus Christ. There was a video or a picture that I saw. I came across, I think it was on Facebook one of these, sometime in the past. But it showed uh, my first day in heaven. You can Google image my first day in heaven and see what I'm talking about. My rendering uh, looks more like a man than a woman in the picture. In the actual painting, there's a, a woman that's hugging Jesus. And it, she's just, just ecstatic to be in heaven and just static to be in the arms of Jesus. Her first day in heaven. It's it just, it's the, it's the, it epitomizes uh, your relationship with Jesus Christ, in my opinion. Um, it's, it's everything. It's just, it, it's the culmination of, of the Bible, uh, a college degree, church. It's just, it brings it all together for me, is um, this, um, this symbol of two people, you know, Jesus hugging uh, one of his believers, one of his followers. Uh, the other one's the Holy Bible. And like, as I said, I hope to uh, get into this and explain uh, this to you a little bit further by giving you some history. One, you know, a buddy of mine said that I don't know which Bible to buy. There's just so many different versions. Which one do I purchase? Well, uh, long story short, you need to purchase the Bible. That's the most easiest for you to understand, the most easiest for you to grasp and comprehend. And um, I'm going to get into some history of this. I used to think the Bible was originally written in English, and it's not. It wasn't, and it's nobody ever explained the history of the Bible to me um, until I went to college, and I was in uh, history of the church, and oh my gosh, the floodgates just opened up for me, and I just I absorbed so much because it just uh, I understood so much more about. The Bible and so much more about church by seeing the history of the of the Bible and the history of the church and where all that that comes from. 
Another thing that, another misconception that I had was a college degree. Um, where, you know, I never knew where it was, where it was a rule that a preacher had to have a college degree um, in order to be a preacher. Where does that rule come from? I mean, obviously, you had the disciples. They weren't learned men. Um, Paul's disciples, Timothy and Titus, they may or may not have been learned men, but they were actually men of God. Many of the prophets, they weren't learned men. So where did this idea come along that a, that a preacher had to be um, uh, ordained? Um, he had to have a degree from an accredited university. Where did this idea come from? Well, through my digging out of information, I found where this information came from. And it's interesting to, to, to see. It's like, oh, so that's where that comes from. Okay, now I kind of get it. Um, yeah, I, I thought that that I thought that God lived in a church, and the only people who could um, translate Christianity to the people in the audience who attended the church was a degreed preacher, a preacher with a, either a bachelor's degree, master's degree, or a PhD. So these were all misconceptions that I had about the whole, you know, Christianity thing until I met this guy. And when I met that guy, um, everything there just, it fell into place and it made sense to me. Um, but then there's, there's the church. And like I said, I used to think that God lived in the church and that God only sent, you know, came down and visited the church on Sundays. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm laughing, but you know, there's probably a lot of people who believe, believe that too. And they just don't want to step forward and say, well, it, it, that's not true. But, you know, um, so Allow me to say that's the way I thought. That's that's the way I thought till I was probably thirty years old. I I thought God just came down and hung out with Christians in the church. I have likened the Christian experience much like uh, somebody who has a cell phone and having your cell phone charged. Say a man is going to a sporting event all day long, or he's out on the golf course playing golf, or he's out out on the lake all day fishing, and he may or may not have access to a phone charger. So if you're like me, you're using your cell phone all day long, and I have to have access to a phone charger in the cab of my truck so I can constantly read maps, I can constantly text message guys that may or may not have been to a particular account, and they can help me get in, get my semi-tractor trailer into an account. <coughs> um, I'm just using my cell phone all day long. And if I don't have a phone charger, I'm in trouble. I'm in a lot of trouble. So the same way it's the same can be seen with, um, your spirit man, um, a friend of ours, a brother of ours, Lauren, doc toggle, um, used to call his soul, his spirit man. And as a Christian, it's very easy to deplenish the energy of your spirit man as you um, conduct your day's business, as you work at your job, as you get frustrated, as you get angry, as you um, listen to, to somebody give you their opinion of you or something you've done. And you know that if the table were turned and the roles re were reversed, they'd be painting an entirely different picture than the, the painting they're, they're making now. So my spirit man levels diminish and I find myself needing to plug in to, uh, to plug into something more spiritual. And here I've kind of given that illustration is, you know, the, the relationship with Jesus Christ resembles a, uh, a power plant. Really. I mean, that's, that's just, that's where the energy comes from is the power plant. Um, reading the Bible. Uh, I think the, <laughs> the outlet that I have here is a 220. It's something you might plug your uh, stove into, your electric stove um, or an electric dryer into is a 220 outlet. 
Okay, and the standard outlet can be seen right here behind me. That's more of a, a 110 outlet. That's just a, a standard outlet. It's in varying degrees. Um, spending time with Jesus is like a power plant to me. Jumping in his word and reading scripture, that's, that's not quite like the power plant, but maybe that's, that's a step up from getting my fat head out of the way, going to church. Um, is reading the Bible, um, getting my degree. Yeah, but, you know, I've seen a lot of guys put their faith in that degree. They put their faith in a bachelor's degree, a master's degree. They put their faith in their Ph.D., and you can just see the arrogance in them. There's, there's no humility there whatsoever. And this can really be a trap. Um, I understand why. It was there and, and who set that up and why they set it up. But this can really be a trap if you're not careful. Yes, I have a degree, but I, I really try not to depend on that degree. I loved my time in school. I loved it because it answered so many questions that I had. Um, in the same way, some people worship this. They worship the church. Um, they put their faith in their church or they put their faith in their denomination. But here I have maybe a 110, you know, charger for the cell phone there as well. So, um, yeah, it's just my spirit, man, gets depleted. And the reason that I may go to church, the reason I may go to Bible study, the reason that I go to choir practice, the reason that I hang out with Christian friends is simply to recharge my spirit, man to get my spirit man levels back to where they should be. Um, when, when I'm with my men's Bible study group and I, I'm dry, I, maybe I haven't been experiencing miracles, maybe I haven't uh, been experiencing answered prayer, but maybe one of my brothers has. And it, it energizes me to hear how the Holy Spirit of God is working in my brother's lives, even though he may not be working at the moment in my life. So... It's, it's extremely important to get plugged in as a new believer, as a Christian. Get plugged into as many outlets as you can. Find as many um, electrical sources to plug your cell phone in as possible to keep your batteries charged. Another idea that popped into my head was a lawnmower. You know, sometimes you may live in a, a neighborhood association where you've got to keep your grass no taller than four inches. Um, it goes up five, six inches and, uh, pretty soon you've got, you know, association members coming over with yardsticks measuring your lawn and saying, you know, sending you a nasty letter saying, Hey, um, you either cut your grass or you're facing some legal problems, you know? So if you're going to cut your grass, you want to use a lawnmower. Okay. I mean, it, it just, it makes sense. And Right here is the instruction manual on how to use the lawnmower. Here's a certificate, meaning that you are certified to either use the lawnmower or you're certified to repair the lawnmower. Maybe you have a small engine certification. Okay. <coughs> then over here, I have a shed that you keep the lawnmower in. Okay. I've run across some people in my history, my tenure of being a Christian, and I've run across a couple of people at the university who literally worship the book, the Bible. They don't worship Jesus. They come across as worshiping this book. They believe that the Bible is the perfect, that Paul speaks about, the Apostle Paul speaks about, I think it's in 2 Corinthians, when the perfect comes. <coughs> um, that's where he talks about... Um, Love being the greatest gift of all that, uh, that the Holy Spirit can give. But um, this is stated when the perfect comes, and there's a lot of Christians, a lot of Christian teachers and preachers and professors who believe that the Bible is the perfect. And, and that I don't, I do not subscribe to that theory. I do not subscribe to that line of thought. Um, I believe that Jesus Christ is the perfect, because the Bible says so. Bible says that Jesus is the perfect, but you know, it's it, worshiping the Bible to me is kind of like Jesus talks about um, the lost being a harvest, um, 
The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few, meaning preachers, people who actually come out and preach the gospel um, to those who are perishing, to those who are lost, so that they can hear about the story of Jesus Christ and what Jesus has done. Um, the harvest is the people, the workers are the preachers, the evangelists, um, the pastors. And for someone who really needs to cut their grass, this is like somebody wanting to use the instruction manual to cut the grass. And to me, that just doesn't make sense. But, but the church has become, in my opinion, the church has become so stagnant that we've got people worshiping the Bible instead of worshiping who this book is about. They, they carry on a, you might, man, there's one church here in Greenwood and I, I'm definitely, I'm not criticizing them. I'm not pointing the finger at them. I'm just saying that if they're a foot in the body of Christ, I'm not a foot. And I'm just trying to figure out where I fit into the body of Christ. But um, I've seen Bible churches. I mean, the, the word Bible is literally in their title. And this particular church, they might take one sentence out of scripture and spend 40 minutes dissecting each individual word. Some people like that. I don't. I just, that just, my ears just start bleeding. It's, it's not pretty at all. Um, but to me, that's somebody who worships the Bible and not necessarily worships Jesus Christ. So, um, you know, and then there's people who put, maybe they worship the certification. I, I don't know. It's just people put their faith in things that they can grasp and not necessarily something they can't grasp, like the Holy Spirit um, can't necessarily be grasped. So if you're going to mow your yard, if, if uh, the problem is your grass starts growing so tall that it goes to seed. And pretty soon that seed falls, it gets in the ground, it grows more grass. And you've got people who would rather discuss and fight over which owner's manual is the correct owner's manual, which owner's manual came straight from Briggs and Stratton laboratories um, in the first place. In the meantime, the grass is growing. The grass is growing, seeds are falling, more grass is growing. And you've got guys arguing about who has the, the best certificate, uh, which owner's manual they should use. And it's a big argument between these two things right here. And in the meantime, the grass isn't getting cut. Well, okay, here's the analogy is we've got people dying every day um, without Jesus in their life, without ever coming to know Jesus Christ. There are people in my very own neighborhood, right underneath my very nose, who have no idea what this whole Christianity bag is all about. And to me, that just, that blows my mind. And I just, I want to tell everybody um, about Jesus. I want to tell them all about what he's done in my life and what he's done for me. Um, the men I meet with on Thursday nights at Bible study feel the same way. And I just, I get so energized being with these guys. I hope to be able to share their testimonies with you. I would love to take my camera my video camera to our Thursday night Bible study and be able to uh, record some of these men's testimonies. Because I, I still get goosebumps listening to some of these guys talk about how um, Jesus just pulled them right out of the cesspool they were swimming in and uh, picked them up, cleaned them off, and, and uh, they just did a complete 180 and they're headed in a completely brand new direction, um, singing all the way. So, um, yeah, it's just, it breaks my heart to see professional people argue over these things right here, and they completely miss that picture right there of the relationship that somebody can have with Jesus Christ. And all they have to do is talk about it. All they have to do is tell them their testimony. Nobody else in the world has your testimony. Your testimony is special. And your testimony may be what your next door neighbor needs to hear. And last but not least, what I've got back here behind me are the reasons why people may not go to church and some of the reasons why people do go to church, 
that does not involve a relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> to me, the reason why you would go here is to worship with other people who have this relationship with Jesus Christ. I would rather spend a couple hours worshiping with 10 people who have this relationship than with 10,000 people who are going to church for these reasons right here. I really would. Um, it just, it, it would blow your socks off to worship with people who have this. It's just phenomenal. It just, it charges my spirit, man. You know, in the words of Doc Toggle, it, it just charges my spirit, man. So, um, so yeah, so going over some of the reasons why people don't go to church, and I'm going to try to do this quickly because I keep running out of, out of videotape, but reasons why people, um, may not go to church is because they don't understand baptism. Maybe they don't understand communion. Maybe they don't understand a, a dress code. Um, I attended a church once where, um, in order to serve the church, I had to wear a three-piece suit. And I've read the Bible cover to cover. And there's nothing, there's nothing in my Bible that says that I have to dress a certain way in order to serve the church toward to serve the church service. This, that was completely foreign to me. And it just really rubbed me the wrong way. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you run into the problem where you, you come to church and you sit in a bench and you don't know where to sit. You know, everybody else is at Sunday school. Nobody else is there. They're all, you know, someplace else. Maybe they haven't got there yet. You're sitting in this bench and People show up and they're they're standing there next to you and they expect they kind of expect you to get up and move because they're in, you're in their seat, you know. And uh, sometimes they'll stand there and expect you to move. Sometimes they'll just move on and they'll take another bench. But they're putting somebody else out because maybe that's where that particular family has sat for the last two hundred years, you know. So it it just you feel kind of uneasy, and maybe you don't go back to church because you took somebody's family bench. I've seen that happen, okay? But that's a that's a popular reason. Um, maybe your vehicle is uh, older than five years. Maybe you don't feel right parking your vehicle next to somebody that's brought their their uh, their Cadillac or their Lincoln Continental to church or their brand new you know family van. Maybe you just don't feel right parking next to them. Um, tithes and offerings, different beliefs, denominational. Um, which denomination is right? What's, what's the difference between denominational and non-denominational? Real quick, denominational, in my opinion, is more like a franchise team. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whereas non-denominational is more like a free agent. You really don't know what you're walking into with a non-denominational. Sometimes that's not bad. But you walk into a denominational church and they have a set way of running their worship service. Um, you walk into a particular denomination in Maine. Um, you should be able to walk into the same worship service in Indiana. That's that's a denominational um, scenario. Reasons reasons why people attend that don't include a relationship with Jesus Christ. Maybe they have a strong kids program. I've I've seen a lot of families, a lot of uh, husbands and wives choose a church because their kids are occupied. You know, the kids are taken care of. The kids are, they, they have really good babysitters, basically. And we can enjoy the church service. And we know our kids are having a good time away from us so that we can have a good time in our church service. Maybe they've got a strong kids program. Maybe there's a dynamic speaker. My wife, Debbie, she worked for a mega church once. And she used to actually field phone calls from church members who would call and want to know who the speaker was for the following Sunday. Because if their favorite speaker wasn't speaking, they wouldn't go to church. Okay, and nowadays I even hear that some satellite mega churches have movie screens where their favorite preacher gets to preach to them from a movie screen, and they won't go to church. I, I they will not go to church unless their favorite preacher is preaching from that movie screen. It's insane why people go and why they don't go to church. Um, maybe they've got a huge sound and light show for the worship production. Maybe they want to look good to the boss. Maybe they're trying to find a date. Maybe they want to impress the ladies. You know, I go to church and I'm worth going out with. Um, big reason they go to church, it's a holiday. Christmas and Easter, two of the biggest church <coughs> uh, 
groups go to church because it's Easter and it's Christmas. They want to look good to God. Hey, God, look at me. I'm going to church. It's Christmas time, Easter. You know, Keep me in your thoughts. You know, Sprinkle a little goodness on me. I'm going to church on the holidays. Um, another reason why they might want to go to church, you know, maybe you've got a girlfriend who goes to church and maybe you don't go to church. Say like maybe uh, somebody I know and uh, she wants to get married in a church and the only way that her preacher is going to marry you is if you attend six, <laughs> six church services consecutively. They've got to be in a row, okay, and uh, then her preacher will marry you. But that might be a reason why you go to church other than this reason right here. And what I want to wrap up with all of this and the, the, the previous videos that I've made is that relationship right there. If you've got that, ladies and gentlemen, all this other stuff behind me, it's going to make sense. And like my wife Debbie says, it doesn't mean you can't find this in church. You can't find this in the Bible. You can. It's possible. But I've heard from so many different people who've tried to read the Bible, who don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. They try to read the Bible, and it makes absolutely no sense to them whatsoever. Or maybe they go to church, and they don't have the relationship. They go to church, and for reasons right there, none of that stuff makes any sense to them whatsoever. So I'm going to end this, and my next videos will probably include uh, the history of the Christian church and the history of the Bible. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, have a good night, everybody. Shalom. Peace. God be with you.